Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a brand new Lush Life video. I'm your host, Leon. Joined here by the illustrious Mrs. Lush. I'm very excited today. You are today. talking really fast. So fast. I know, but wow, I'm excited. You should be excited because you have no idea what we're doing. Never do. I'm going to spring it on you. I'm going to bring it up on the screen right now so you can oh, see the shit. live reaction. It's something you're going to enjoy. It's a sequel to something we've done before. Ooh. Oh. I'm not feeling too good about it. Our boy Victor is back. <gasps> oh. One more dead body questions. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about dead bodies today. Once again, we did this episode previously. It's a Wired video. They got a mortician named Victor who apparently stole the show because their video got a billion views. They brought him back again. A billion? Uh, three billion. No, I'm just um, oh, I'm I'm exaggerating. <laughs> anyway, I'm not surprised, <clears throat> but your enthusiasm was very accurate because this is definitely still my favorite <laughs> still video. Still favorite video. But if you don't know my wife. I was like, oh, he's going to do something. Stupid about she like keeping up with the Kardashians. She's a lifelong nurse and she's very interested in like anatomy, physiology, and like dead body stuff. I think it's interesting I like too. Dead people. And you guys, oh, by the way, most of you guys all in the comments of my last video, everyone was commenting like, they put up a new mortician video. Oh, really? Victor. Yeah. So thank you to those of you guys who commented. I'm like, there's on no way you video. figured this out on your own. <laughs> no, that's, I got the, I got the mafia here to help me out. Right now, Vicky's back. Let's take there a look. There are two ways to close the mouth. One involves actually what we call a needle injector. So this is normally going into bone. I love how they just- so The wire wow. holds it in place. Hello, I'm Victor M. Sweeney, licensed funeral director and mortician, and this is part two of Mortician Support. Amazing, For I just have to reiterate, I said this last time, but Victor Sweeney is the perfect name for a nerd mortician. Like you can't <laughs> think, it's like Sweeney Todd, but oh, it's just so good. Tech support with Victor Sweeney. All right, first up, here's a question from lovely Nicole. How do morticians get into their profession? Like what inspired them I, or whatnot to want to pursue that career? I definitely asked this last time. I was like, what, like, yeah, what makes yeah. you go to school? I think like, he kind of answered it. He did a little bit, I think. I don't remember, but I was like, what makes you just go to college? Be like, yeah, I want to play with dead bodies for the rest <laughs> of my life. Like, That is such a fine question. It, um, it differs from mortician to mortician. Decades ago, it used to be more common that uh, a funeral home was a family business. So it might be that your okay. dad was a mortician and your grandpa before well, him, and you just follow it? in their footsteps. <laughs> Today, most morticians are what we might call first generation funeral directors. <laughs> so they're going into it Cold. They say so are his patients. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, because dead bodies are cold. You guys, all right, uh, cool. Yeah. Ruined it. Thanks, Nobody Jay. knew that. Thanks, Leon. Yeah. For myself, I always grew up kind of surrounded by death, if you will. What? I found my best friend uh, dead in his bed when he was when I was four. Jesus. I had a sister that was born before me that passed away, and we'd always visit her grave. Victor. And then for about 10 years when I was a kid, we lost a close family member, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, every year for about a decade. So I was around funerals a whole lot. It made me understand that this is something important and worth doing. First of all, that got dark really fast. He did kind of, he said that, but without as much detail in the last one. He said, you know, he had a, experienced a lot of death in his family, and you Found know, kind of, yeah. Found his best friend dead in his bed. He didn't say that. Jeez, no, 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 please, yeah. at four? But he put it eloquently in where he said it's something, something worth doing. And, and yeah, worth it's doing, important yeah. to people because I get, it is the tradition surrounding the passage of this life into whatever lies beyond is a very, I mean, the only thing yeah, sure in I'm, life is death and taxes. So there's got to be some sort of <laughs> business around the death part of it. I don't know. I'd want, I want Victor to be my mortician. I'll tell you that right now. I'm going to reach out to him. <laughs> You want to croak? Will you help me? I out? was going to say, there's no, there's no chance. Nobody I don't, else I'd want to wire my jaw shut than you. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I, I want, <laughs> sorry, I was gonna get a little nasty there. I'm sorry. Ah! Can you be buried according to your heritage or beliefs? In Colorado, for instance, there is one county that actually allows burial outside on a pyre. So you could build a, <laughs> a burial pyre out of wood and light up grandpa if you were in that county and you had proper write off from the government. Dude, let's go Game of Thrones style. That's amazing. That's like- That's creepy. No, build up like a massive pyre and light that shit on fire. You put some roses on it. This is very like medieval, very like Game of Thrones fantasy, uh, you know, send off, like a true warrior's send off. I'm sure there's some legality there behind that, right? No, that's why he said there's like oh. a county in Colorado. It's only it's like the only place in the country where you're allowed to do it. But you have to get like a permit and you can build a pyre and light your fucking loved one on fire. <laughs> yes, dude. I want to that's I think that's awesome. I think maybe I'm saying that through a looking glass, but uh, but still. Why do dead bodies get stiff? The proper term mm -hmm. for the stiffening of bodies after death is called rigor mortis. So this would rigor be when mortis. the muscles of the body 
tense up until the tissues themselves start to break down a little bit. So if a body is in rigor and we don't want it to be, the best thing that we can do is what's called breaking rigor. Typically, uh, you're gonna see rigor mortis in the joints is where it's primarily gonna be a problem. So to break rigor, all you actually have to do stiffen. is manipulate those joints forcefully. And I'm talking Ugh. bending those fingers way, way ah! back. Um, and after you do that a number of times, they'll loosen up. So then you can have the hands positioned properly. Hmm. Our next question is from Alicia Wood. Interesting. When morticians give you a shower, Asking for a friend. It's a fine question because really, uh, we it's do bathe question. every deceased that comes through. So we'll wash their bodies, we'll shampoo their hair. But huh. for your question, giving a shower, I cannot imagine trying to prop somebody up, <laughs> trying to make that happen. <laughs> Having them laying on a table and doing it while they're laying down and I don't have to hold them up with one arm is uh, definitely ideal. You just gotta get them up on the old there, prop them up. Get into the shower. No, you just give them a little sponge bath, right? Yeah, the same way you would take care of someone who's bed stricken that was sick, I would imagine. Learned a thing or two about bed baths in nursing school. Bed baths? Oh, yeah. That's like nursing 101, how to make the bed, first of all. That's like a big thing, how to make a hospital bed. <sighs> and then secondly. To prepare it for a bath? No, just or how to just make a bed. just in general, oh, okay. They have to be just right, trust me. Hospital corners, if you know, you know. If you know how about hospital corners. But yeah, that's like I know the about, second thing you I know learn about is. pop corners. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Delicious snack. I eat them a lot at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you learn how to give a bed bath. That's like probably the second or third thing you learn. Would you bathe me if I didn't want to do it myself? No. Here's a question from Sovereign Insane. If somebody wished to be turned into a life-size doll after death, would it be legal? Taxidermied? Absolutely not. No. Here's a question from <laughs> VV Capitalism. I thought you just, no, no, I, no explanation. Yeah, no. yeah, no, no extrapolation, just no, shut up. Fishing sticks a body. <gasps> yeah, this is what I want. Shot between the eyes. Oh. Like they just fill it in mm. with silly putty? One of the things uh, that we do th and we work very hard on is what we call restoration. Cosmetic, when someone's right? shot between the eyes, yeah. provided the rest of their head is there and we just have a bullet hole, first we'd probably want to pack it with cotton or some other firmer material. And then on the topmost layer, we're gonna cover it with what's yeah. called a, a wax. Um, this wax is called the surface restore. It's like spackle, bullet hole spackle. Mm. For your, uh, she just had you spackle on our wall earlier this earlier this week. Yes, I did. That wall needs a lot of, that wall over there, don't look at it on your way out. The I, whole thing I've, needs to be replaced. Seen, yeah. I have a wall over here that's like my, the recept the receptacle of like when I throw things when I'm mad playing video games and it's just like dings and nicks all over the place. It's terrible. So Ooh. we have a wax, this is what it's, I wanted it's more softer than candle time. wax, but when it's oh, yeah? introduced to the heat of the hand, it tends to soften up. And then this wax we can use to wax over a wound. See how it covers it just like that? Make and then we up. can get the proper texture with uh, stippling and with brushwork, and then color over it after that and try to blend it in. Stippling in brushwork, I mean, I know we mentioned this last time too, but like, there, it's, it's such a big part of this is like, in my mind, it's like, oh, just dead bodies and you gotta do all this stuff. No, they're like makeup artists too. Like Yeah, he was saying that like was a, like part of his coursework was the cosmetic piece. Yeah, the piece. cosmetic piece. So you're like a cosmetologist as much as a dead bodyologist. They all go together. The beautician and the mortician? Yeah, say? the beautician, mortician, nice. Technology Jill. Are sky burials legal in the United States? Well, so sky. a sky burial is where you leave a body out on a high place for vultures and other uh, animals to pick apart. It is not legal. Here's a question from That's weird. Kelly Elizabeth. That's weird, do that? Ew. Do morticians really sew your mouth shut when you're dead? Hashtag the right. The answer to the that right. is yes and also no. <laughs> you might be thinking that we're talking about sewing the lips. We generally don't sew the lips closed. You can imagine how much time Obviously. and how much <laughs> fine detail it would take to do that. There are two ways to close a mouth. One involves actually using suture to bring the jawbone <laughs> up with... Bless you? Thank you. Was that a, <laughs> that was the weakest sneeze I ever heard in my life. I'm just impressed you. really ladylike. I was gonna say, like, I've, as much, as hard as I've ever tried to hold in a sneeze, it was at least 50x louder than that. You just went, <laughs> that's, my, that's how my wife sneezed, she goes. <laughs> Cause I'm as classy as they get. <laughs> you still, the cameras are off and your ass turns into a trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. Yeah, you know. <laughs> a needle and some thread, this is a large S-curve needle. Holy crap. You would go up, Whoa, dude. out of the nose, oh. across the septum, back down, and then you're actually gonna go through the frenulum, yeah, the yeah, yeah. frenulum of your lip here. There's usually a little piece of skin. Mm -hmm. You'll go through that all on the inside of your mouth. Once you do that, you can just pull the two ends together, 
and it tightens the jaw right up. The other method of closing a mouth is with what we call a needle injector. We have a mouth here, here we and go. we're gonna take this needle injector, uh, and it's a piston. She's got the willies. See, it clicks. Ooh, so this piston yeah. is gonna drive our sharp brad into the wood here, just as a demonstration. So this is normally going into bone. So there's our Whoa. bottom one. They there's do that in like the one. gums or whatever? You simply twist them together. So the wire holds it in place. Once the jaw itself is closed, huh. the lips I mean, and the rest the of the mouth uh, take their form uh, very naturally. Here's a question from Haley Hay. How do morticians do people they know's bodies? I could never. I actually do that pretty frequently. And honestly, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice, he says. Of course you would I, do I, So this is kind of like to build upon last time where it's like you have to, you get desensitized obviously to being around. Yeah, and he talked about bodies. that, yeah. yeah. But it is a different aspect of it when it's someone you knew when they were alive, I would imagine. Right. But, but may then maybe for make him, like sure that they're taken care of. Well, that's what I mean. It sounds like for him, it it, it feels almost like like he's doing a, a service and he gets fulfillment out of that. That's which, exactly which, for which, him. That's exactly the case. Which he is technically tell. like you're you're helping these families have a nice service for their loved one to pass on and make them look as good as possible. So, I think. Really, that's probably the best way to look at it, as opposed to being like sad that you're just around dead bodies all the time. It's like, listen, people die all the time. It's part of not, it's part of life. So, let's make the best. He's doing the best he can to make the transition easier for the family, I guess. Because you know the person, you know how they do their hair, you know how they do their oh. makeup, you know how they like to get dressed. And here's a question from okay. Amber: <laughs> When viewing oh, so my grandmother for makeup. her funeral, sure. I noticed her nose looked odd. Upon closer inspection, it appeared to have been squashed and carefully restructured. Is this a common occurrence? They have, well, I'm just gonna, I think, I don't know, but like they have to do something because of the blood flow, right? Doesn't the nose like, no, cause there's bone in there. I'm it could have happened like in transport after they like sure. went to the morgue, like, you know, say they were at the hospital and they went yeah. to, like, who knows? Well, let's listen to the expert. Amber, that is a good question. And I'm sorry that was your experience. I wouldn't say it's common, but it depends on the manner of death. So let's say someone passed away where they had a very quick heart attack and fell onto their face. Yeah. Um, it's possible their nose might have been broken or maybe they laid on their nose for a number of hours and it maintained that squashed look. Then it would be just as simple as straightening it out, maybe putting a little uh, cotton in the nostrils to hold their shape and then embalming the body so those tissues hold their shape. Here Here's a go. question from Tiffany Payne. Do breast implants get taken out? Five question marks. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> Whoa, no. that's like his version of lettuce, mayo, and yeah, onions. Yeah, 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 where he's wow. like, question mark, question mark, question mark, yeah, where you just. I like him even more. I know, verbally, verbally stating the extra uh, emojis or. Oh, my God. I'm gonna, oh okay, I'll say the answer. definitely right no. Victor, I don't know how he's much he's getting paid YouTube. by the funeral home, but my man should be starting a YouTube channel right now and stop letting Wire take all his fucking. Stop letting Wired take all they his They better glory. pay this man a pretty penny. I, not a chance he's getting paid a lot to do this compared <sighs> to what he would make if this was his own video. Well, if you're watching, start your own channel. This one was uploaded like a week and a half ago, oh almost gosh. two weeks. We it's already at three him. million views. We should message him. We should just adopt Victor to live in this office. He can work out of the, he can actually work out of this office and start his right, YouTube channel. Like death, and then we can. <laughs> because you live over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how can I say? You know, it gets a little nasty out here sometimes. Our next question is from Ot Ot. How do Who? morticians decide what to do with the dead person's arms? So that's kind of an interesting question. Um, put them traditionally, by side. the hands are placed over the umbilicus, so over the navel, and almost always right, the hands like are gonna be right. positioned left over right. The reason being is that more often than not, by the time you pass away, you will have been married, so we want the hand with the wedding ring to be on top so go. people can see it. But maybe the variation on that is if we have someone who's very large and in the casket, sometimes their hands don't quite reach up, or maybe they would meet, but it's so high up in the casket, we wouldn't be able to close the lid securely. So if that's the case, we usually just put the hands at the side, typically resting just on top of the hips. A man needs that triple XL casket. <laughs> you know, they're gonna get that big Mac I'm sure casket. I'm sure there's quite the upcharge for that. And hey, listen. <laughs> Don't have to pay for two airplane seats, but you gotta pay extra for the casket. You do have to pay for two airplane seats. Do you now? Seats. Yes, you do, of course. Oh, obviously now. Oh, or they make I like seatbelt extenders Wasn't that a stuff. big thing years ago? I, I don't really know how it transpired, but I remember when that was like, it was considered, I, it was a debate of like whether you have to make heavy people pay for two seats. Oh, well, it, like, if you're gonna take up two seats, then like yes, you, you need to I pay mean, yeah, for yeah, two. Guess, they yeah, do make seatbelt extenders. Of so. course, yes, yes. Yeah. 
If you're gonna from just use one, Aaron execution. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to go into the field of work back in the day, but I was afraid of how it would affect me. What's one situation that's affected you the most, good and bad? Could that line of work cause PTSD? Well, the truth of it is, mm. um, it can be a very emotionally taxing job. Sure. You do see a lot of things that you just don't want to see. Graphic injury, increasingly decaying bodies, mm. burying children. Mm. All those things but, are uh, really, yeah. really, really, really hard. But there are a lot of uh, yeah. I hadn't really thought about that the much. The child piece of it. <sighs> Imagine, like, you had a child you knew? Yeah, like, that's, that's just another level. Like, no, nope, yeah, no, nope. nope. no, no, thanks. It's just, I, I mean, it's one thing when it's an old person. Yeah, you, f of course, like it's the natural passage of life. They've lived a long life, whatever. But yeah, I'm sure you see everything from child to accidents. Babies. Yeah, no. To graphic, obviously, like, ugh, I could never, dude. I could just, I could never be in this line of work. I hate that shit. Thank you, Victor, for your dedication to the craft. Good things, too. For instance, when you come across a situation like that, you're in a position to actually help a family in a way that really nobody else can. There As for go. it causing PTSD, mm. maybe. I think it depends on the person. But I think if you put the idea that you're there to help first, kind of before your own emotional investment in it, that's probably the ticket to keeping you free of, of those kind of debilitating anxieties. Next up, we have a Very question well from Or of the Orient. He is, he needs Why do dead bodies have to be guy. prepared and shit? Just toss me into the ocean. <laughs> Why is it so uh, complicated? Uh, Just drop me in and let the orcas eat me. That could possibly be I an option if we're talking person. about burial at sea. That's the reason funny. we prepare bodies is to provide time for families to gather. More often than not, states are gonna have a limit between the time a person passes away and when they have to be either buried or cremated. Mm. With embalming, mm. it actually negates the necessity to bury a person right away. So let's say we're having a funeral and we have families coming from both sides of the country. Hard to do that in 72 hours, let's say. Sure. If we embalm a body, then we don't have to worry so much about the timing, and we can delay it a little bit if we need to. I don't have a great deal uh, of experience with burial at sea, um, being in the most landlocked state in the country, <laughs> <laughs> but, but there are <laughs> protocols for um, shroud- Name that state. Colorado. <laughs> you you came out like, of the gate. You came out of the gates like you knew the answer. I thought so, I did. Yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. making me question it. What did you think it was? Oh, uh, never mind. Cause I'm gonna sound real dumb. Oh. Remember the time we did the map? Yeah, that was yeah, bad. No. We got like eight states. No, now I need to know. <laughs> Why do I feel like? Oh God, the most landlocked state. Everyone wants to know after watching this video. Nebraska. Okay. So I did not think you maybe from he's from Nebraska. Pull up the map. I gotta see it. You gotta know. This one. Anywhere. Yeah, there it is. So Colorado's uh, is. right next to it. It's close. You sure about that? Yeah, this is Colorado is that right Colorado? here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. sure? I'm um, 100,000 million percent. Nevada right next to it. No, wait, that's Idaho. This is Nevada. <laughs> I'm not going to trust myself when it comes to geography. I don't right. trust you one bit. <laughs> Whatever, Mrs. Name that state. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I just want to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I came right out of the gates with a solid answer, though. Eh, okay? Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Even at, this is this is a skill of people that have to do things in public a lot is even if you don't know, pretend like you do. And 99% of the time you can get away with it. Fake it till you make Fake it. Fake it till you make it, baby. But but there are protocols for um, shrouding and wrapping and then disposing of a body a certain number of miles out on the coast. Um, huh. So that way, like when it goes overboard, it doesn't wash up on shore and the orcas get to eat you just as you wished. Here's the next <laughs> question from nice. dollar sign. Do morticians From really remove all the inside time. organs and put them at the foot of the dead person in the casket? Or what? is that a lie? What? That's Thankfully, a that is lie. an outright lie. Yeah. Typically with an embalming, we don't have to remove the organs at all. They can just stay right in the body. Even if we have an autopsy um, in which the organs have been removed for study, they're typically placed donation, back in perhaps? the body cavity. So putting them in a bag at the end, not gonna happen. And at any rate, it's a huge liability. What if it broke open? Or what if it was just sloshing around in the end as you carried Aww. the casket out? You don't want that, we don't want Couple that. Couple of lungs flying. No. <laughs> yeah, right? I did want to expand on what he said earlier because I'm curious, where he was like, oh, the whole thing with embalming and allowing families to gather. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that like, if you don't embalm a body, does it already start to decay like immediately, in like a couple days? Yeah. So if you didn't embalm it, it would be like, uh, like, it's on its I way. guess it would smell. It, obviously, the smell it is really bad. It starts to smell, yes. Interesting. That is, yeah, it's weird to think about human body, like, as everything in 
the world that's organic, it starts to rot. There's nothing circulating through yeah, it. And, oh, God, yeah. I just, I'm, I've am i lived a sheltered life. It's from <laughs> Frantic Woman. You finally Can morticians it. put facial expressions on the dead? That is a great question. Nice. Yes, more or Let me less. get that so smile. Typically, a person's facial expression no, will. That would be way too creepy if they were smiling. No, they like make it kind of look like they're, they're like, sleeping. Yeah, just resting. Like, just like this. Do your resting best. Do face. your best mortician's <laughs> body face. Nice <laughs> Hang on, I'm trying not to laugh. There you go. No, don't. That would be creepy if they made it look like that. Almost make itself when we close the jaw and yeah. set the features. It's just now like there are things we can rest. do. Um, to help create a more pleasant expression, things like uh, filling in some of the cheek. Uh, let's say they've uh, gotten older, maybe I mean, I love getting losing a little some of their muscle tone. We can there. fill in the cheek with some cotton or possibly cheek uh, no, some not. fluid that we can that. inject into both. I've never right. done that. Mm. I have One of the not. things that I always do is I put a little bit of cotton inside the mouth under the uh, turn at your mouth when you smile. In my experience, uh, generally people that smile more have nicer expressions when they're in the casket, and people that are frowners they tend to frown in the casket as well. Interesting. It's almost like your muscles have been trained over decades of your normal facial expression, so yours is just gonna be resting bitch face in the coffin. Exactly. Wow, imagine that. I'm not trying to be happy Mine's in my casket. Mine's gonna be wrinkly forehead. I want a fat smile, teeth showing. Leave my mouth open too. No, how about like keep my mouth like when I sleep? Sure you can. Ah, oh, <laughs> gross. I'm such a mouth breather. Tongue actually. out, just draw, you know, ah, place a little drool. It's brutal, dude. I wake up, my mouth is so dry, I hate it. Jordan, are all morticians this hot? <laughs> uh, the short answer is- You sure that question's question not, exactly. say, you sure that question's not for my wife after last episode? That's so funny that they included this. I love it. I love seeing him have to answer it. He keeps the I'm gonna dead I'm going to tell you right face. now that absolutely no chance that there, most morticians are this no way. studious and uh, attractive in a nerdy way and named Victor Sweeney, which, God, I can't get over it. Uh, the short answer to that is no. I usually look like a pasty, stringy, just stereotypical mortician, but when they put me in front of the lights with a studio magic, I look very handsome. Our next question is from Elian. Hey, I have a question. What do you do if a person has died in some kind of accident? Yeah. This guy's so like, just hey, dude, you need a little gel in your hair. Charismatic, right? Yeah, he's usually got like the, the apron on. Yeah, yeah. Guy. And has a severe injury. For example, lost a limb. Do you fix the part of the body that was injured, decapitated, or do you simply <coughs> put it back? Asking out of curiosity. Really, Elian, it depends on the type of injury and maybe the magnitude of it. So if someone loses a limb, let's say, if the limb is relatively intact, apart from being severed from the body, we can re-articulate it and actually just sew up all the tissue around it, making sure it's properly embalmed. I have not, thankfully, had too much experience with decapitation, but the way a person handles that, you embalm the head independently from the rest of the body. Ooh. And then when it comes time to re-articulate <sighs> the head to the rest of the spinal column, you actually drive a dowel into the spine and then set the atlas of the head, the, the rest of the neck, on top of that dowel so you know it's in the proper place. <sighs> then it's just a matter of carefully uh, stitching up the two ends of the skin together and waxing over it. Here's a question from yeah. the Crypto Knight. Wow. Do you know why the do dead bodies fight? Oh, yes, you jealous? The reason for that is a bacterial buildup are. in the abdomen that creates gas. That gas will cause the body to float. Here's a question uh. from Dinah Jarrett. Why do dead bodies stink? Ask during breakfast, Come no on, less. that should be pretty well, obvious. Well, I have a five-year-old yeah. at home, and this is probably a normal oh, breakfast a for me. Question. Do you yeah. ever have meat or any other vegetable no, that goes off, spoils, or rots? That is exactly what our bodies do oh. as soon as our immune systems stop taking care of us. You have a lot of internal bacteria living in your gut, all those hollow organs, and those things do smell bad. Mm -hmm. If a body comes in already mm -hmm. smelling bad, already partially decomposed, typically we'll put that body in a body bag if they're not, not already in one. And then a good way to reduce smell is to uh, actually use baby powder as well as baking soda. Both those uh, soak <laughs> up those nasty smells quite well as long as the body's in a sealed pouch. If we have an embalming where somebody is, is smelling bad, really the embalming itself typically will fix some of that smell. Ideally, the fluid will push out the blood, and a lot of times, as soon as, as that blood is gone, the smell goes with it too. If someone is smelling really bad, huh. a, a nice trick is just a little bit of Vicks Vapo Rub under the nose. The next question is from Jash. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to think about like the smell of rotting meat, but like the smell of a rotting human is just a whole other level of disgusting. 
There's some, you know, there's some particular I guess odors. a rotting human is rotting meat. That's exactly what it is. Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. There are some particular odors um, in the medical field that yeah, you yeah, will yeah. not Stuff ever that forget comes from your the gut. entire life. Stuff that comes from the gut. You will never forget. C. diff. C. diff. <laughs> but potentially worse. No, don't. GI bleed. It's pretty bad. <sighs> it's really bad. And yeah. It Good comes. stuff. I want to slurp some with a straw. There's something else. <laughs> I forget. Um, there's a, probably a billion things that smell terrible in the medical field. Well, yes, but like the, the standout ones. Like lancing a cyst. Oh cyst, my god! Cyst, a cottage cheese cyst. out of a cyst are the most horrific smelling things. That can stink up an yeah. entire building. Yeah, 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 for sure. Possible for a mortician to allow someone to watch while they're working on a body? Sure. That is a great question. The know. answer is no, huh. unless they are actually an intern. In most states, they won't allow anybody outside of someone who has a funeral huh. doctor's license to enter into an embalming room, let alone watch the preparation of a body. Out of respect, Our next maybe? question is from R.L. Queen. Hmm. How do hair That's and nails still Even grow on the body yeah. after death? That is an interesting question. The hair and nails do not continue to grow after death. There are no uh, life processes that would cause uh, the growth of hair or nails. I've heard that rumor before, I've too. heard that rumor. It's definitely like it's a... It's just a lie. It's just a weird rumor that's a lie. It's one of those things that circulate. <laughs> yeah, it's just people... No truth to it. That people just believe for some How reason. How would that be possible? It makes no sense, and it doesn't, and, and that's why. It does, it's not true. The look of hair growing and nails getting longer is primarily from skin around them retracting. Yeah. Right. Our next question is from Lord and Savior Jared Gaines. I heard of a thing <laughs> where you would die and you can have mm -hmm. your tattoos preserved and given to your loved ones. What? Have you ever what? done something like that? I've never had that request, but I have looked into a company that does do that. So really what we would have to do is just remove that outer layer of skin. The company would probably send us a biohazard a shipping container so we could mail that top layer of skin with the tattoo off for preservation and then probably framing uh, before they would send it back to the family. Here you go, hun. Something to remember me by. A whole yeah. ass. Big fat right turn arm. Turn that into sleeve. like a leather jacket or something. Uh, just get like a mannequin arm and taxidermy the tattoo on it and like hang it from the chandelier. That would be a great way to remember me after I inevitably die of a stroke in a few years. Because my blood pressure is too high from playing video games a lot. Yeah. And drinking. <laughs> no, I don't drink. That's crazy. They go together. <laughs> blood pressure and drinking? No, blood pressure and video games. Yes. I mean, <laughs> uh, no! Uh, 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 Drinking in video games, I meant. Ah, yes, they do. For and then the blood pressure so and then the wall. Yeah. Question. What are happening to the bodies of the deceased with coronavirus? Ugh. Are they cremated? Are morticians wearing go. hazmat suits or Topical. something? Topical. That is such a good That's and a very relevant good question. question. So when someone dies from coronavirus, they do not have to be cremated right away. We can embalm their body. It was kind of scary right away because I remember very distinctly I'm um, handling bodies of people that had died of the coronavirus before we knew how it was spread. We always wore the maximum number of personal protective equipment that we could. So not quite a hazmat suit, but the next thing closest to it. Coronavirus is spread by droplet infection, right? By respiration from the body. Whenever you manipulate a body, let's say from the place of death, huh. there is gonna be some expulsion out of, the, out of the lungs. Right as coronavirus started, we would start to shroud every body with a plastic shroud to contain in any sort of expulsion from their mouth, hmm. whether uh, aspiration or um, just simply breath. You wouldn't normally think that that would be a problem with a dead body. But as it turns out, we would always see kind of foggy condensation on that plastic shroud right around the face. And that's it. Th so, because I imagine like the virus can continue to live on while the body is still, well, like if it's not, if it hasn't been that long since the body has been deceased, it can still have like warmth and whatever, a, an environment that could allow the virus to still gestate, right? I like who knows, know. but obviously you have to, put, I mean, like everything, you play it as safe as possible, especially when it's brand new. You just wrap it in plastic, put a little saran wrap on them. Like you said, it's spread by droplets. There are still some droplets in there that can expel right, from the like body. Right, it's like your saliva is gonna immediately dry up or whatever, your breath. Thank you for all your great questions again. I was oh, happy I could inform and teach you guys uh, a little bit more about my life in the death world. Also, Victor, woo! to my YouTube channel. And yes, in the Dapper Mortician. Yeah, I was gonna say, can we get a can we get like a a plug, Victor, for like your Netflix special coming up? Maybe you're live streaming on Twitch, or you're gonna be YouTubing soon. Something, bro. You gotta get 
Get he has out. a Twitter on there. It was in the beginning, I think, his Twitter handle. No, I handle. think that was a wired thing. That's where they people submit the questions. You sure? I'm quite sure, because it had WI in it. Mm. Victor's probably one of those rare guys who just doesn't really like social media that much. No, that's not true. He wouldn't be so good at this if he didn't. He's way too good. Yeah, he's, uh, he'd be so good at this. Maybe he, like, gives... He seems like someone who, like, presents. Like, maybe he, like, presents in his sure. field or something like that, you know? All I know is... Uh, Thank you guys for the recommendation because I can't get enough Victor Sweeney in my life. They better be around three. Yeah, and I know I'm gonna I'm gonna walk. I know I'm gonna like. If there see, is, please I'm let gonna, me know. I'm gonna come home early from a work trip. I'm gonna I'm gonna find my wife in bed just watching Victor Sweeney videos online. <laughs> I caught you. I knew it. And I won't even be mad. I'll just join her to finish him up. So thanks for getting educated with us. We can't wait to see you in the next video. And God knows if they do a part three. Uh, keeping the wife happy with these is the main reason I do it. So this really makes, give me a heads up makes my life easier. So I can, yeah. you know, put well, a little extra rouge on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Peace.